walking down a hallway in this building on Google's uh, campus in Mountain View, California, except Google does not own the building at this time. The company that built this campus, Silicon Graphics, SGI, remember them? Own, the camp, own this building. I'm on my way to meet the CFO of SGI, a gentleman named Hal Covert. I wonder if in the history of business, has an employee ever started their day, looked at their calendar, see they have a meeting with the CFO, and they think, score, this is gonna be a great day, I, this is awesome. Do you think? I, I don't think so. I'm really anxious about this meeting for two reasons. Number one, uh, Hal was pretty new to SGI. We had been hired from Adobe, uh, and he already had the reputation of being a bit of an asshole. Surprise. Number two, the topic is the fiscal plan for the upcoming year. And Hal had already been cutting budgets left and right. He had already asked the PS business, which I was part of, to double our margins, double our profits this coming year, or he wanted to get out of the business, give it to partners. My plan going into this meeting is to win the day with the data. So Hal's over there saying, look, your consultant should be 90% billable. I had data. I could show him all the time we were spending on strategic free work that sales gave away. I could show him all the time we were spending fixing shitty products. I have more data. How? You know, when, when PS is involved, the product deals bigger. When PS is involved, the accounts grow faster. Data is on my side. So I go into this meeting, shooting my data points, pew, 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 pew. No effect. He, he's not having any of it. He's pounding the table. He says, look, I know what a good consulting business looks like. Uh, uh, okay, but we're an embedded professional service business. Apples and oranges. He doesn't care. Does not care. Stakes are super high. Because if we decide to get out of this business, people are going to lose their jobs. People that I had spent the last five years helping to hire and recruit, and I told them this was going to be great company, great opportunity. This is 2001. Do you remember what the tech marketplace was like in 2001? So stakes are high. Therefore, to this day, I am incredibly empathetic when I'm talking to a professional and they are in a death match with a superior around crazy financial expectations that are gonna cost jobs. I am very empathetic. Six months ago, I'm in one of those conversations with a member. It's a CRO, we're doing this touch base call, and he tells me, he goes, Thomas, my budget is getting cut 25%. I'm gonna have to let sales and marketing people go. Um, and I said, why? And he says, well, there's expectations that I'm going to get efficiencies from AI. And I said, oh, well, what use cases are you deploying? And he said, Thomas, our company can't even spell AI. <laughs> Ooh, not good, not good. And I was really nervous for this CRO because six months ago we had just completed a body of research looking at the use cases that tech companies were deploying, right, internally. And we were studying what was below the waterline, mature versus what's still hype. And six months ago, we published this heat map. And we basically said, look, we see a lot of activity within support and education services, but there's this sucking sound in sales and marketing in terms of, of, of rolling out AI. And we knew why, we knew why. Three big reasons. Number one, our members were telling us that their data is crap. Their customer data, their sales data, and you know AI, garbage in, garbage out. Second reason for, for, for various factors, sales and marketing people just were not experimenting with AI the way that other organizations, parts of the organization were. And the third problem is what I'm gonna call the vision problem, okay? If I go to any of your companies, and I surveyed you and I said, well, tell me, how are you gonna grow revenues next year? You have, all of you have the same effing playbook. 
You do. You, you want to, let me tell you what it is out loud. Hey, we got to stop selling to the technical buyer and we're going to sell to the business buyer. We got to stop selling features and we're going to sell value outcomes. We got to get our channel engaged. We got to upskill our salespeople. Sound familiar? Yeah, okay. You know what you don't see in these strategies? Digital first customer engagement models, AI enabled workflows. So three big problems, the data problem, the adoption problem, and this issue of lack of vision. And I also knew six months ago, this wasn't just a sales thing. I had done a Tectonic episode, our podcast with Nick Meta from Gainsight, and he said, look, man, every CS leader I'm talking to who owns revenue is under immense pressure to grow that revenue, renewal revenue, expansion revenue with the same or less headcount. So this is a really big problem facing sales and service le leaders. How do I get efficiencies in, in my revenue generation workflows using AI, and yet we know they're way behind on this? This is not good. This is not good. But I have to tell you, for a TSI researcher, these moments, it is like Christmas morning for a five-year-old child. This is what we live for. This is what we live for. It's like hard business challenge, facing the industry, unclear what to do. We have got to fire up the TSI research engine on this. And I have to tell you, as a, as a researcher, the TSI research engine is sort of like having Hermione's magical knapsack. And if you're not familiar with the Harry Potter movies or books, Hermione, who's, she's a good witch, don't worry, good witch, she has this knapsack that she can reach in and pull out whatever she needs. You need a spell book, we're camping outside, you need a tent, she just reaches in, pulls it out. That's what it's like working with the TSIA research platform. It's sort of like this magical knapsack. So I reach in, we've got to solve this problem. The first thing I pull out is this incredibly cutting edge digital tool. It's called an Outlook meeting invite. I get a couple of the researchers together. I asked Martin actually to join us. And I said, I said, look, there is this big problem facing our members where we have this lag on AI and RevGen. We have got to help people close it down. And so the first thing we did is we took our best thinking to date, what we knew, and we said, well, what are the potential use cases? And we published a paper called The Emerging 20, and you can go find it on the TSI portal. And it has 20 use cases across the life cycle of RevGen. And we got that out there. The next tool I pulled out of the bag was an industry poll. And we use polls to find out where there's heat. So they're very short, five, seven questions. And we asked this poll, where are companies using AI? I don't care what kind of AI. Where are you using AI across the life cycle? Get the data back. And we see the most heat is around renewal management. Over half the companies say they're doing something with AI and renewal management. So I called Jack Johnson, who leads our research in this area of renewal management, and I said, Jack, I need to talk to somebody who is really smart, has a lot of experience with AI and renewal management, because another tool that we pull out of the bag is what I call conversations and case studies. When you're dealing with emerging practices that aren't, aren't common yet, that's how you find out what the leading edge looks like. You gotta talk to people, you gotta write up case studies. So Jack connects me to this guy named Brent Grimes, and he said, Brent has a lot of experience with AI in his career, and he just started this new startup called Reef AI, who happens to, to be here at the conference. And this is one of the use cases they help companies with. So I call Brent up, get on the phone, explain to him the research journey we're on here. Uh, he tells me, you know, he gets excited about that. He starts telling me about what they're doing at Reef AI. I get excited about that. I don't want to put words in his mouth. There was a little bit of an instantaneous bromance going on, just like that, but anyway, you can ask him, he's here. So I said, I said Brent, this, these are great insights, I want to really click into this use case, and we, I want to capture this. Um, let's get you on Tectonic, our podcast, and record it. Actually, what I probably said was, hey Brent, I want to tape this. But when I use the word tape, my wife and adult children look at me and they go, okay, boomer, so I don't use that word anymore. Let's all pretend I said record. And we did, we, so we brought Brent on, 
and we made this episode, it's out there, highly recommend you listen to it, and we really drilled in to this use case of AI for renewal management. And one of the key insights Brent had is that this data problem, everybody's got a data problem. He said, look, we have worked with enough companies now, you can get insights from your customer data to predict renewal propensity in three months, maybe six months. It's not a year or two years to start getting really important insights from your data. That's insightful. I want to have more conversations. I meet with the CBO, Chief Business Officer of ShareFi, ShareFi, Mike Flouts. We also record an episode. And Mike basically said, look, I have been on this data train for quite a while. And as somebody who manages revenue, I could never go back because this, these models, these propensity models, this is really machine learning around my revenues, are allowing me to see around corners. More insights. I talked to a few other people about this. Eventually, I circle back to Jack Johnson and I say, look, we gotta get a paper out there because the state of the art for renewal management now absolutely should involve machine learning models. And so we got that out. That's out in the portal. You can go take a look at it. Go back to the polling data. Where's the next source of heat? Leads, qualifying leads. I wonder what people are doing there. We followed up with another poll. And it was interesting, there, there wasn't as much heat around using AI for lead scoring, et cetera, but almost 70% of the respondents said they were using AI to generate sales materials. So I'm looking at the data and I'm kind of wondering, you know, I wonder what people are doing there. And I reach into the research platform bag here to say, well, what can I pull out here? And I'm able to pull out something you can only pull out when you're talking to a bunch of companies like we do, and that is serendipity. So I had this monthly call with this executive from a marketing consulting firm called Inverto. We just talk about business and just a standing call, and I'm, I'm just starting to chip on this lead generation sales material thing, and, and that's the day that we have our call, and she's all excited. And she goes, Thomas, I know you have been telling me for the past year that for our company, we've got to figure out how to leverage AI. You keep saying that everybody's workflows are going to change. Well, I want to show you this new tool that we stood up. And so she shows me that they took all the information about their offers, they put it in a small language model, right, Gen AI, and then their account executives can query it when they're working with a customer. And so based on the problems, you know, the customer wants help with, you query it and it comes back and says, this is the offer. This is what you should offer them. And she says, it's making our account executives so much smarter. It keeps the offer information completely up to date, all these advantages. And I said, that is wicked cool. I said, how'd you do that? And she goes, well, we use this company called Embrace AI. And I said, well, can I meet them? Another conversation. She said, sure. So I have a conversation with the founders who are here as well, Seth and Derek. Great conversation. You know the drill. I said, we've got to capture this. So we did a tectonic episode. And it's really very forward looking on how sales and marketing organizations could and should be using AI to take out all kind of you know, labor. So I, at the end of this podcast, I asked him, I said, I want to talk to somebody else in the wild who's just recently deployed. They said, no problem. They connected me with a CMO from this company called Infuse. And incredible story. Uh, I interviewed her and she said, yeah, we deployed um, a Gen AI tool for sales materials, and two things happened. Number one, I got rid of my content marketing team. If you're in content marketing, I hate to say that, but that is coming your way. She goes, I use a part-time contractor bouncing against the model to do all my marketing materials. Number two, we have these very complex RFPs. We have loaded all of our past RFPs into the model, we get a new RFP from a customer, we plug it in, it comes back with a draft within minutes. That used to take our sales team days. Huge use case, right? This is really getting interesting. Now, I reach back into my magical knapsack. The next thing I pull out is Star Wars. So every year, TSIA has Star Wars. Companies can tell us cool things they're doing. I wonder if anybody's doing any cool stuff around Rev, Gen, and AI, yes. Two really interesting use cases. One of them was from pros, and this is what they do for a living for customers. They have AI tools to help with pricing, and et cetera. I was 
really wanted to understand what they were doing internally. So I talked to Tom and his team, and they explained what they had going on. They talked about same use case, RFP generation is huge. We talked about you know, how you basically do adoption, get salespeople to lean into us. So we wrote up a case study. You know, lessons learned, benefits, et cetera, got that out there. Another interesting Star Wars award came from Dell. Using machine learning to do pricing. So they have the, you know, a lot of transactions on renewal contracts. They feed that into a machine learning model, and it comes back and it tells them, this is the discount for that customer based on the data. You stop asking the salesperson to figure it out. Since using this tool, a couple things have happened. Renewal rates, up. Renewal revenues, up. Discounting, down. This is the future of pricing here, right? So these models you know, are getting obviously very sophisticated. They're, they're mature use cases. I now have all the pieces, parts I need that I can define a framework for TSI members on how to deploy AI in RevGen. But before I go there, I gotta go back to this conference room. When we left, things were not going well with Hal. Things were not going well. Ultimately, he made the call to get out of the PS business. Made the call. I couldn't stomach it. I went to my boss and I said, we're doing a whole big round of layoffs, I wanna be on that list. And he said, are you crazy? Do you know what the market is out there? I said, I know, I can't do it. I look at my wife, I sit her down, I said, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this layoff. We have two young kids at home. She looks at me and she says, are you batshit crazy? Do you know what that market is out there? I'll tell you what was batshit crazy. Two years later, I get a call from a friend of mine who is still working at SGI. And she'd just come out of this all hands and she said, Thomas, I had to call you. She said, guess what they announced today? By the way, Hal's long gone. Hal's not part of the executive team anymore. And she guess, guess what they announced today? I said, what? We're gonna fire up a professional service business. <laughs> because our customers need help and we need the revenue. That whole experience taught me a very valuable lesson, right? If you are in an arm wrestling match with a superior, and it's really their opinion against your opinion. And that's what it was, because I had data, but it was an N of one. You know, our management team did not have deep operational data on what a good embedded PS business looked like. We couldn't defend that. So it really was opinion versus opinion. And in those battles, you will lose every time. Every time. And you know what happens? Good people with good intentions make bad decisions. And that's what that was. And I'm telling you, folks, this is exactly what I'm seeing companies do when it comes to AI in RevGen. They're making decisions based on hype, based on hope. They're freezing budgets. They're cutting budgets. They're letting people go because they think somehow magically they're going to get this, and they don't have a plan on it. Follow the research. Follow the data. If you are going to deploy AI in RevGen, what does that staircase to success look like? And let's say that you're nowhere. Who wants to admit that they're kind of nowhere on this topic? Anybody know a couple hands? A little shy there, no problem. The first thing you should go after, really, is AI sales materials. Using AI to generate marketing and sales materials. And that starts by simply just getting a gen AI tool out there to your sales and marketing people. Again, 70% of you, you've done that. Get them to start using this to write emails, to work on a presentation, et cetera. But what you want to drive that is you want to load your offer information into a small language model and accelerate marketing content and proposal creation. Does that make sense? Massive savings, mature use case. There are companies in this expo that can help you with this. You should go after that. Next, AI revenue management. What do I mean there? You are using machine learning models. If you have enough transaction volume, you feed it into these models and they will tell you risks around the revenue. They would do forecasting for the revenue. You people typically start with renewals because that's where you have the transaction volume. 
In our executive advisory board meeting, I was unfolding this framework. I would say about a third of the executives in there now use AI propensity models for revenue management, and they all said the same thing, folks. Could never go back. I stop asking the salespeople, you know, is this thing gonna come in? You know, what's so-and-so thing? That's not the model. So this, and, and you do, it does not take two years to get your data to start giving you insights here. Next, go after AI recommendation engines. What does that mean? Engines that basically start giving your account executives, your CSMs, recommendations on how to interview with the account. Hey, we've noticed, based on the profile of this account, what they're doing on adoption, they're lagging, CSM, here's a recommendation, here's the next three plays you should run. AI is gonna be smarter than our account people because it's looking at a much bigger end. And ultimately, AI is gonna be giving us recommendations on offers instead of us kind of guessing. In the end game, which is basically what JB put on the table here this morning, is it is going to be a digital first customer engagement model. And there is no doubt that these digital agents are gonna work through a lot of the, the, the simpler, both service and sales motions. BDRs, SDRs, that type of grunt work, it, that is gonna be a digital I interface with customers. That's the staircase. This is the staircase you gotta get on. Because the pressure that JB was talking about this morning about CFOs looking you in the eye and saying, where's the efficiencies? That's not a year from now. That's not three years from now. That is unfolding right now. We do not want good people with good intentions making bad decisions. It's gonna cost people jobs unnecessarily. If you want more details on all this, go out to the portal. We've got case studies, we've got research papers on this. We continue to chip on this. This topic is so critical. You know, this experience I had, you can tell I think about it a lot. And I don't blame Hal for the decision he made. He was under immense pressure from the board to write to ship. He was making the best decision that he could. And the reality is that he inspired me. He inspired me that there's got to be a better way. He inspired me really to be a TSI researcher. The probably big reason I'm standing on the stage, so I don't know where, however you are, wherever you are, I actually owe you a big thank you. <laughs> and for everybody in this room, again, there is a better way. Follow the research, make good decisions. Thank you. <laughs>